Welcome back, this is the third part of my QNAP NAS ideal setup video series. Now, when you've got a QNAP NAS, I'll be honest, the majority of you out there are going to be utilizing your NAS for media. Lots of people use it for backups and surveillance and plex and all that sort of stuff, but it's all too many of you use a NAS as a DLNA media server, Digital Living Network Alliance. And with this, you end up being able to distribute your media to all the devices on your network. As I've mentioned in other videos, your network, and this is incredibly caveman, but is your network is all the devices in your home or office that use the same internet. That is not really what the word network means, but it's as good as anything else. Network is basically all of the devices in your home or office that are connected together via the network via, and have the same IP. But just think of it as all the devices on the same internet. Now, all of these devices that you want to access your NAS will typically use DLNA or other means to access it. But once it goes outside of your home network and outside of your home or office, then you're relying on internet services. And so many apps on the QNAP range from first party apps, such as Photo Station, Music Station and Video Station, all the way through to third party apps like Plex and Rune, utilize access to the QNAP NAS in a different way. And what I'm gonna talk about today are the best are the best apps for you and your individual setups. So let's make our way to the screen. So here we are back on our familiar QNAP user interface. Now, when it comes to multimedia, of course, multimedia comes in a variety of forms, photos, music, and of course, video. The QNAP has a multitude of ways in which to help you take advantage of your media, dare I say, more than rival Synology. Now, if you make your way onto the user interface, there's, you know, I'm only going to show you a handful of the applications available, but I think there's about 30 to 40 different apps, depending on the kind of media you want to access. And I've installed them all in advance. Now, one app that they have that is pretty much essential from the beginning is Multimedia Console. Multimedia Console means that you are able to completely cater the indexing, background, thumbnail generation, and more of all of your media because these are things that take a lot of data and time once you're utilizing a NAS device one of the things that first hits you is that simple things that you take for granted on a local PC like little images on folders thumbnails and small video playback is something that once you do on a NAS can be tricky it's not that it doesn't work but it's just the bigger the file size the more data that has to be handled at any given time over the network if you're accessing a hard drive on your PC or Mac system, chances are you're using SATA, which is 6 gigabits per second. Network connectivity is 1 gigabit per second. So this bottleneck and this reduction in speed is something that needs to be taken care of in advance. Things like transcoding can be used to reshape and resize files either in advance or on the fly to reshape a file so it's much easier for your host system to access your client, so to speak. The client is, of course, your TV, your phone, whatever device is connecting to the media on the NAS. And Multimedia Console allows you to basically index the correct folders and change files in the perfect possible way. It's an incredibly user-friendly app and covers a multitude of applications and is only getting bigger. Now, first, let's look at photography. On the QNAP, we have two main apps for photography. I'm, just, I'm lying there. There are technically three. One is, of course, FileStation, and FileStation is, as the name describes, a basic file management tool. It gives you the ability to access all the files and folders on your NAS on a very familiar uh, Windows File Manager, Mac File Management Explorer. Of course, this isn't really ideal for enjoying media and more about browsing folders, files, backups, creating directories and more. So technically you could use this to play all of those media files, but we're not really going to count that. The main application at the moment is PhotoStation 5. PhotoStation 5 arrives in several um, different configurations straight away off the bat. By default, it will load gallery mode. And in, in preparation for this video, I have already let it scan several directories and folders of albums of photos and media that I've put on this device. Everything from photos of you and your friends, to places where you've been on holiday, to places where you've gone for work. Now, this application is there to help you browse and enjoy your media. So say we'll go for a photo here, we'll go for um, these two people here, we'll have a look at them, and we'll get this photo 
fully sized. It should be mentioned that if there's any delay, as I've mentioned in other videos, that is because this, the PC that I'm using to render the um, content of this NAS and render this video is using a lot of the GPU power. So I apologize in advance for any delays on this video. Now, from here we can find out all kinds of information. From here, for example, we can find out some background information about where the photo was taken. We can find out what the device was, a mobile phone, and we can find out loads of a lot more photography heavy information about the photo. If we're using a 360 or VR device, we can look at the photo in 3D and that will do the two optical lens version of this. We can tag photos or ask the device to scan for photos. And I'll get onto that in a little bit long, a little bit of time. We can download the file, share the file to different people with link only access and passwords, or do a slideshow of an entire album. And again, there's lots of stuff here you can do with that app. If we return to PhotoStation, you can browse through and create smart playlists and more, as well as streaming the uh, media to other devices too. If you are doing any copying or more, it's all done in the background and you can monitor, delete, copy, duplicate, backup, all the stuff you need to do from this interface. Now, if you're more of a Windows file manager and you prefer to see things with the whole breadcrumbs and directories, you can switch to manage mode. And in manage mode, it's a far, far more file and folder enterprise. It still has the date timeline there, but you can switch to folder mode and look at it in the way that file manager presented it to you. So from here, you can browse pictures and folders in an incredibly user-friendly way. And you open them up and it will just open up each directory one by one for you. And again, you've still got the option of all of those files and folders that we talked about earlier, but this time we're able to do it in a file management perspective rather than, ah, oh, sad, the last C bit, um, uh, rather than the usual file management or glossy version. Now, there is one other app but it isn't quite fully uh, released yet. By the time you watch this, perhaps it's already available. And that is the smart learning tool from QNAP. QMAGI or QMAGE, depending on how you want to pronounce it, is their photo management tool that allows you to do facial tagging and smart um, learning from your photos. So if you have you know, 10 years of photos, you can upload it, and I've only uploaded about 500 or so, to this device and from here not only if you've got all the files and folders but th by the time you're watching this perhaps it's now fully released you're able to sequence people things subjects food landscapes all that kind of information here and it will smart tag people so that once you tell the device who a certain person is by tagging them then it will automatically tag further photos of that person in your existing directory and further. But this device, this app is still in alpha, so we're not going to feature it too much here. If we make our way back to the user interface on our QNAP NAS, we can move on to music. Now, there are multiple ways to enjoy music on your NAS. First and foremost is QNAP's own application. With the music station application, if we log in here, we're able to see that we can enjoy all the music on our NAS. Not only can we enjoy it in that picture-friendly, album-friendly way we saw earlier with the spotlight mode, but on top of that, if we go to manage mode, we can see a far more file structure easy access route. On top of that, we can not only browse the music on this NAS while it finds it, we can stream this media to other devices such as smart speakers or Bluetooth devices if we have a Bluetooth dongle, smart TVs and DLNA devices. Now it's worth mentioning that that application I've got there is not playing well with my GPU recording software. Um, but it is also, you know, worth mentioning that there are multiple ways to enjoy music, such as with HD Station and an HDMI device, or utilizing Kodi. You can use Plex for its music support, and of course, Rune Server. Rune Server is something that's relatively new to Plex, it's something, uh, not Plex, to QNAP, it's been around for a little while, but Rune Server lets you um, turn individual folders on your NAS into streamable, accessible directories for your Rune supported devices. Again, smartphones and better as well as Rune supported speakers. Perhaps you're a bit more old school and you want to use an iTunes server. Well, 
the QNAP arrives with the ability to be a QNAP, uh, QNAP supported iTunes server. Turn individual directories into iTunes accessible libraries and this will add it to your existing version of iTunes and therefore add these great directories that are then accessible on all your devices using the user interface that you're familiar with. Finally, we'll make our way away from music and into video. Now video is the biggest one of the three. Notwithstanding the fact that you can obviously access videos via file station, as well as the many, many mobile applications for QNAP, you can access it, uh, your videos via video station and get lots of background information on your files and folders. So if we go, we have an episode of Mr. Bean here, and we can make our way into it to either play the file or folder, or we can learn some more about the file. Again, we can add stuff in the background, but if you want a little bit more information, other than strict file folder management, as we've seen before, you can install applications like Plex. Now, Plex lets you add your media to your Plex account and access it on all your multitude of devices. This means that you can now stream your media. So if we do this for movies, add the Plex Media Server application for free. And from here, we'll be able, if we click next, to create our Plex Media Server on this NAS. It will scan the files and folders that we've got. It's already found two of the movies in there. And then it will go online and get lots of metadata and scrape that metadata to give you all the background imagery, cast information, trailers, and more. And again, Plex is a free application, although there is a paid version out there that lets you do a lot more with different things. And that's going to find all this background information about that. Again, you can use things like MB Server. You can use Twonky Media Server, DLNA Media Server. There are just so many ways to enjoy media on your QNAP NAS. But just remember, the first thing you're going to want to do is download Multimedia Console. If you've forgotten since the previous video, head to the App Center because installing apps on your QNAP is painfully easy. You just have to open up the App Center and download it just like you would any app in iTunes or Google Play. In my next um, video, if QNAP Setup Guides, I'm going to talk about USB backups. That is the ability to back up um, your data to a USB device so you can take it off site or vice versa. But nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.